can see it on TV, you can read a book, you can even see it on a movie screen, but there's no way to get that sense of, oh my God, there were these things walking and flying around that are so far beyond the size of anything we know. So let me walk you through a little about this, this exhibit to show you that these dinosaurs are unique in being full-sized and as anatomically accurate as we can, even down to the sounds, which we draw from birds. We modify the sound a bit. The first guy, I worked on the movie Jurassic Park, and the little spitter doesn't look like a little spitter in real life. This is him. This is Dilophosaurus. It was, in reality, the first giant meat-eating dinosaur. He's 20 feet long. He didn't spit. He didn't have a fan that went out like that. But other than that, they got it right. So. Uh, what I did instead was make exhibits about what's right about dinosaurs and use the errors in the movie to the benefit of learning about the real dinosaurs. And what's very cool and also unique about this exhibit is we paired them with skeletons. So you can see what's the actual scientific information that informed this. This is not a dinosaur, but he's so cool we couldn't leave him out. He lived in dinosaur time. His name is Quetzalcoatlus, like the Mayan god. And he is the biggest flying thing that ever lived. And I think the weirdest. I think it's my favorite animal here because it's so rarely recreated. When his wings went out, it would be 45 feet wide. This guy has to be a favorite of mine because it's named after me. Uh, my last name is Lessum and his name is Lessumsaurus. The scientist was honoring the fact that I raised a lot of money for dinosaur research from exhibitions. And in fact, he thought I was very rich because of all the money that was generated from these exhibitions and given to science. He was sadly mistaken to find out after naming it after me when it was too late to take it back that I'm not a rich guy or I would get better t-shirts. This is the star of the Triassic. Dinosaurs started small and they grew over time to become the dominant creatures. When they started, they were much bigger animals, giant crocodiles, for instance. But the advantage of Pererosaurus and other dinosaurs, the reason they got bigger and took charge was they were smarter, they walked upright on legs and stood on their toes, which is how we run. So they were much more agile than a crocodile even today is. This is the scene recreated from skeletal form to real form. And one of the coolest things about it is that it illustrates a huge mistake. It's nice for kids to see that they're not the only ones that make mistakes. Half of all the dinosaurs ever named are mistakes. And a big one is here. The guy who was the real Indiana Jones, down to the hat and the gun and the fear of snakes, was an explorer named Roy Chapman Andrews in the 20s. And he found and named Velociraptor. And Oviraptor, a little toothless meat eater who was here, he thought because it was toothless that, as the name suggests, it was an egg thief. Because it didn't have teeth, that would be a good thing to eat. And there were lots of plant eaters around. Well, 80 years later, an expedition from the same museum in New York went back to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, and there they found a nest of eggs, and the eggs were baby oviraptors. So oviraptor wasn't the thief, he got a bad rap. He was the, or she was, the good parent taking care of these babies. So it's a chance to illustrate, in life form too, velociraptors who were the nasty little hunters of that day, attacking a nest with an oviraptor sitting on it, which is what we did in the robot form. And what's cool looking at the skeleton of Velociraptor is that he's not even scary movie-sized. Jurassic Park upsized him quite a bit. He's, he's very tiny. Yeah, he's a, a poodle, a nasty poodle. Over time, dinosaurs got bigger and bigger till we got to the end. T-Rex is one of the last guys there was. Also, he's the star of the show. I have a little family scene, Parasaurolophus. Uh, everyone says this wrong, along with Ankylosaurus, which is Ankylosaurus to almost everybody. But who cares, the dinosaurs can't hear you. So this guy, what's so cool about him is this is a dinosaur that we actually know what it sounded like because he would blow through that crest on his head. And a smart guy recreated the exact dimensions of the crest using bathroom tubing and blew through it and got a B-flat sound. And that's interesting because it's the same frequency that whales communicate with and elephants. They need to project sound over long distances. So this low vibrating tone was great for herds of dinosaurs too. So he could tell his pal at the other end of this conglomeration of 500 duckbill dinosaurs, watch out because T-Rex is coming. Here we go, here's T-Rex. Each tooth, and I just happen to be carrying one, of a T-Rex is 
this size or bigger. You know, they broke them off all the time and replaced them. The shortage of dentists required that they always replace their teeth. So they got as big as bananas and they're thick. They have serrations on both sides so they could saw meat and they could also crunch through bones of other dinosaurs. They're the most devastating weapon that we've come up with in nature. And the reason they probably had such dinky arms is that all the attention and the energy and the weight went into the killing machine that was their mouths. And since they stood mostly like a teeter-totter, you could only have so much weight forward of the hips. So you don't need your hands. They couldn't even brush their teeth. But they needed that powerful jaw. And it seems that because of the weight of these heads, there's no meat-eating dinosaur much bigger than T-Rex. That seems to be anatomically as big as you could get. It wasn't an easy life being a Triceratops. The interesting thing is that his horns really are not useful for defense. They're quite thin. Um, they're made out of the same thing as your fingernails, keratin. And so they were probably used in display. There's lots of scrape marks on them with other Triceratops. But when it comes to defending against the T-Rex, unfortunately, they were probably lunch meat. There you have it. So we have more than 20 dinosaurs here, skeletons as well as these robots. And it's a chance to experience all of dinosaur life life-sized. So really, come down and see it at least once a day.